<laughs> I might be the only one here. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here this morning. Uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to pleasure to be around like minded saints. And uh, I, I, Brother Heath, anytime he calls me, I just go. I don't care where you tell me to go. I just go because I'm so grateful for all of the things the school has done for me. Uh, so any other opportunity I have to seek and meet new saints, I try to take my advantage of that opportunity. So I'm trying not to hold you too long. Again, I'm going to pray this try. <laughs> if I do, don't be too bad. We're going to walk out on you. But today I want to talk about having a new attitude, a new mindset in Christ. Philippians 2 5 lets me know it said, have this mindset, have this attitude in your thefts, which is also in Christ Jesus. I was always told in my life that attitude is aptitude, right? It doesn't matter what happens to you or what you do as a result of it. All these quotes just simply mean that our attitude is a choice. We choose how to respond to circumstances. There's a great gospel preacher. His name is Brother Don Blackwell. He's a great gospel preacher. Now, one day he was riding on his ATV and was friends, and he rolled over on him and he became paralyzed. Now, Brother Don could have had a lot of ways he could have went at that moment. Brother Don could have said, Well, me, God, why do you do this to me, right? Or he could have had the attitude in which he decided to take. He used it as an opportunity to minister to others. Because when he had this accident, now he had to have people to install a ramp. He had to have people to make special accommodations for his house. So Don used his opportunity to show those people that were doing his work that how great it was being a Christian. He was smiling. The guy said, hey, you're right now. Hey, smile. I'm going to sell this rap for you. Why are you smiling? And Don simply said that I'm sorry because I have to join the Lord that lives in me. And now as a result of the attitude of our brother Don, we have two new brothers in Christ. I want you to think about it. He didn't let the situation dictate how he responded. He responded with the mindset of a Christian, the mindset that we should all have. That not woe me. But how can I use this situation to be a blessing for the kingdom of God? And that's the mindset that we must have too as Christians. And the think about taking in Philippians, we see in Philippians 1 uh, that Paul was in prison in Rome. This is AD 61. He's writing this letter to the church of Philippi. Now, this letter, this congregation, it was started out in Paul's second missionary journey. This is a congregation that was near and dear to his heart. Financially, they supported him. They supported him in any kind of way they needed to support him. But just like any other church, you know, they, they faced some problems, right? Uh, in first, in uh, Philippians 1 28, you will see that they have issues with opponents of the gospel. If you continue reading Philippians, Philippians 4 2, we'll see they had two sons that had some spiritual issues with each other. Who knows? Could have been on who bring the potato side to the course by the fellowship. I don't know. We don't know what it was until they had an issue. So Paul is writing this text to remind them, now that you're in Christ, think like Christ, live like Christ. Don't bring all these worldly thoughts into your presence. So what is attitude? What is an attitude? He said, have an attitude in you that is all going right to Jesus. So what does that really mean? Well, Ethan Spires uh, describes an attitude as a subtle way of thinking about something or someone typically reflected in one's behavior. So it ties the way we think to our behavior. So let's look at how Paul thought, how Jesus thought, and how it impacted their behavior. And by doing so, we're going to see how it's going to impact our behavior. So if you look at Philippians 1 1, we'll see that from the very beginning. The mindset of Paul. The attitude of Paul. Now, Paul was the father. Well, Paul, if you see here, in this very first sentence, it says, Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which had Philippi, with the bishop and the deacons. See, again, Paul would be known as a big man in the presence of the day, right? He would be a big shot. 
But he didn't come in with that attitude of a big shot kid. He said, I am a lowly servant. And if you look at that word, that word servant is actually in the original language is doulos, which means slave. He's saying, Paul is literally saying, I am a slave to Christ Jesus. And if anybody knows about the slave in that relationship, you know a slave has no rights, no thought of their own, and just simply obey the master. Paul is saying, I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about obeying the master. And so that's the attitude, that's the mindset that he had. He humbled himself, not as a big time but as a lowly servant. He's a servant of God. And that's what I'm hoping that each and every one of us will strive to be. If we look at Philippians 1.13, I want you to see how when Paul was in prison, he didn't use that in his circumstance to dictate what he was going to do. He used his circumstance to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. He didn't stop Doing the gospel of Jesus Christ when he was in prison, he was physically in there, but he wasn't spiritually in there. Many of us will walk around freely in. We're, 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 we're spiritually in there, though. We're not willing to do what Paul did and continue to preach the gospel no matter what the circumstance. That's what we have to do. Now, first Philippians 1 and 13 says, so that my bones, this Paul talk. In Christ are manifest in all the past, in all other places. So with him being in bondage, he's saying this is resonating not only right here, but here in all other places. The reputation of the world getting around about the gospel of Jesus Christ, even though he's in prison. This is what he said. And he said, that many of my brothers in law waxing confident by my thoughts, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So Paul was showing them that even though I'm in prison, I'm still doing the work of the Lord. He didn't let anything come between him and his responsibility for God. And I think we have to have the same attitude that if Paul didn't have this attitude while he's in prison, while he's locked up, what kind of attitude can we have while we are in free? What kind of attitude do we need to have? Paul saw everything he could for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, many of us have a history. What are we doing? I want you to ask yourself this question. What are you doing for the Lord? What are you doing right now that you wasn't doing maybe five years ago? Or are you doing the same things? I want you to ask yourself, I want you to challenge yourself to see how much work you are doing. How much evangelism are you doing? When God gave the mission to go into the world and preach and teach the gospel, that's for us now. At the time, he gave it to the apostles, but they're no longer here. Get what we have to do. And our mission now is to go and say, they say, big world. And if you're not doing your job, it's time to be done. You want to lay the feet and arms of God. So it's up to us to have the mindset of, I'm going to go out and do what I can to serve God and to bring those to him. Paul and the Hospital, as we look at Acts 28, 30 to 31, we'll see that Paul and the Hospital for two years. The Bible said that Paul stayed two full years in his own written mountain and welcomed all those who came, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching things about the Lord Jesus and all of this unhindered. Now, he was locked up, yet he still served God. He didn't let his circumstance, with hindrance, hinder him from doing the word of God. So what excuses do we have today? Now, you have to lock up. You're right here. What excuse do you have for not spreading the word of God? You know, I get so tired of this country. We, we so caught up in political things. And black lives matter. Blue lives matter. As a Christian, I miss to be all for now because that's what it's all about. Ultimately, our mission has to be about the soul of the lost, no matter what's going on in our lives. That's why Brother Don encourages me to see a man who's paralyzed, yet he used the situation, the people that were around him, to influence them. And that's what you need to do. We need to do. Maybe you got unfavorable 
diagnosis. But now you get in touch with the doctor that maybe you can influence to get in the church. So whatever your circumstances is, no matter what you go through, I try to tell you in prison all the time. You in a prison, you can't be holy. Ultimately, our whole lives need to reflect that of Jesus Christ. And how do we do that? Having a mindset of Christ. So once you become a member of the church, that means all those things you used to like to do, you like to go to the church joint, gamble, and all the other things you like to do, there are things that you can do now, right? <laughs> but let's go to Romans 12, 1 through 3. Because this is what Paul encourages us to do. That once we are in Christ, act like Christ, think like Christ, and have the attitude, the mindset of Christ. I'm going to get into that a little bit later, but I want you to look at this first. He says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your lives as a living sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He said, You ain't even doing a whole lot if you do that. That's just reasonable. That should be expected from you. He said, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by a renewing of your mind. So what does that mean? I mean, you can't go in with the same mindset that you had before. Now, your mind should be thinking about proving what the will of God is, which is good and acceptable and perfect. I know a lot of people say, well, Running right into it's too hard to live a Christian life. Well, you have that mindset, it is going to be hard for you, right? You go to anything with a negative mindset, it's going to be a lot harder for you at the end of the day. But it's time to change that mindset, and it is easy because Jesus said it was easy. Let's go to Matthew 11, 29 and 30. I want you to get that out to me. I want you to change your mindset today that the Christian walk is hard. Jesus said it's not. Are you going to believe your mind, the line mind of Jesus? Jesus said that my yoke is easy. Learn from me. I'm a gentle and humble in the heart. You will find work for your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden light. He said it's not hard being a Christian. It's just hard because of our attitudes, our mindset must change. 1 John 5, 3 says, For the love of God is that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not, are not burdensome. So he's saying that the commandments are not hard. What's hard is our obedience, our mentality to follow what God says. So a lot of people will say, well, I just can't do it, brother, because, you know, I, I just, I just, I'm the same as I was, I'm be the same. Well, no, a new mind, a renewed mind, means you're going to change some of those things. Because none of those things that I said that tempt you, nothing that's tempting you can stop you. James 1, 13 and 15 says, no one is, when he say he's tempted, I'm being tempted of God. But God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's carried away. Enticed by his own lust, then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. When sin runs its course, it brings forth death. It's time for us to stop blaming God, start blaming who is responsible. You! But we can avoid sin by having this mind, but again, Philippians 2 5, have the mind in Christ, have the mind in you that is all born in Christ Jesus. So, what is Christ's mind? Let's go back to the Bible. Philippians 2. I'm going to start at verse number 6. Philippians 2, verse number 6. The Bible says, first of all, verse number 5, says, let this mind be in you, let in Christ, who, talking about Christ, was, being in the form of God, God did not need Robert to be equal to God, but made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a slave and was made in the likeness of men. See, Jesus came in the form of a slave in the likeness of us so he can understand all the things that we go through. So what? We don't have any excuses. Because Jesus came, he lived a perfect life, he showed us how to do it, so we're not doing it because us, us on us, not on him. He showed us the way. In fact, 
The reason why he, the whole reason why he came down here is to show us that we can live a life out there. Let's go to Hebrews 2, 17 and 18. Let me like you don't believe. Let me prove it to you in scripture. Hebrews 2, 17 and 18. Hebrews 2, 17 and 18. Bible said, therefore, in all things he had made it like his brother, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest and then pertaining to God to make perpetuation for the sins of the people for sin he himself was tempted in that which he suffered that he is able to come to the aid in which those were tempted. So Jesus he came down to live this life without sin to show you and I that even in the human form that we can live a life without sin. See the Bible says in Romans 3 23 all have sinned, have sensed, and fallen short of the glory of God. So what that means is, now that we have sinned, we should ask forgiveness, try to live our lives now what? like Jesus did. Jesus went back to heaven. Don't you want to go to heaven? We got to do what he did. Let's, let, let's just do what he did. See, the Bible says that in 1 Peter 2, 22, he committed no sin, nor no deceit found in his mouth. 2 Corinthians 5 to 1 says, He made him to know no sin, to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteous of God in him. So think about all the things that Jesus did for us. So one thing that we should do is have that respectful fear for him, for all the things he's done. Matthew 2 and 12 says, So in my blood, brother, if you always obey, not in my presence only, but much to all my efforts, work out. Your soul salvation, how? Very interesting. Your walk, your life is going to look different from the world. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Bolton John Case in Dallas. Bolton John was a brother in Christ, first of all, all in his house two days before he died. He got shot by a police officer by mistake. And a lot of people thought it was so weird that his brother ran, but one of the other ever got it, the one who killed him. I look at that as a beauty because I think about Christ. I think about the mind of Christ and the mind that we should have. Even on the cross, God, Jesus said, but you ain't going to follow my God. He knows what they do. So we got to have the same mindset, the mindset that no matter what nobody does to us, we're going to have the mind of Christ to say, I forgive you because I want to be saved. If you want to be saved, you got to have that mindset like Jesus did to forgive people no matter what they do to you. The Bible says in Philippians 2, 15 and 16, so that you prove yourself blameless and innocent, children of God, above reproach, in the middle of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you are lights of the world. You ever think about the mindset of a child and how Jesus always employed us to think like little children? I remember when I was a child with my husband, we could have a fight. I mean, a jack of my fight, I could play with all the people too. Five minutes later, we just had to be best friends again, right? That's the mindset of Christ as well. To have the mindset of, again, no matter what somebody done to me, I'm going to still have the mind of Christ to forgive them so I can live my life with God. See, Paul, even knowing he was about to lose his life, Philippians 2 17, he still. Wanted to dedicate his service to God. He didn't care what was going on in his life. He wanted to dedicate his life to God. What about you? I know many of us have went through a whole lot of pain in life. Some of us have lost loved ones. Some of you may have lost children. You lost your mother. You lost your father. You may have uh, lost close friends, family members. You went through so much grief in your life. You went through so much turmoil in your life. You may have been abused. You may have went through so much. I want you to be encouraged today that despite all the things you may have went through, God still loves you. God that cast all those things onto him because he can provide rest for your soul. But it all starts with you. What kind of mindset do you have? Have you changed since you've been in the church? Are you the same person that did the same things that you did before you found the Lord? It's time for you to have a different mindset of life that reflects that of Jesus Christ. So I don't raise my standard from your salvation. Neither is your brother 
uh, Brother Carey, any other brother or sister in this congregation. The standard for our salvation, the standard for our living, the standard of the way we should live our lives is Jesus Christ himself. So if you live in yourself against Christ, you'll know you got more work to do. That's what we need to continue to grow and improve. Well, it says 2 Timothy 2.15, the study to show yourself approval for that. But if you're not a member of the body of Christ, the Bible says faith from our hand. Hearing by the word of God, you must believe that he did. Like to mention, he left the riches of heaven. He came down to this cruel earth to suffer on that cross. And y'all even thought on that cross. They beat him with the flax, beat him constantly, put a crown of thorns on his head. They struck him on the cross, put nails in his hands. He hung on that cross, trying to breathe for six hours. And he eventually pulled himself up. Trying to avoid what really happened to Sunday, which is death. Six hours it took for that death to happen. So he was trying to breathe and pull himself out. Turn up and he said, yeah, yeah. He had finished a mission that God gave him. And because he finished that mission, he gave you and I the right, the opportunity to be saved. But we must be baptized. Now we look at Luke 13 3, let's know to repent. But Mark 16 and 16 said that we cannot be saved. We cannot be saved unless you baptize. Why well, don't y'all know Satan right there? Well, all you got to do is pray. Bring your hand up, bring God into your heart. I'm going to tell you, baby, that's not in the Bible. The Bible says if you want to be saved, you must be baptized. Galatians 3 27 says you must be buried with him. And the only way to get buried with him is to replicate what he did in the gospel. We can find that God in the first Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's simply the death, the burial, the resurrection by Lord's name, Jesus Christ. How do we replicate that? Romans 6, verses 3 and 4. And this is my last text. Close that out of this. This is so important because I want you to see how you can do it with Christ. To be able to say, I'm going to say the prayer that's long as he's coming back to flame and fire for those that do not obey the gospel. So I'm going to tell you what the gospel is. Again, it's the death, the burial, the resurrection by Lord's name, Jesus Christ. So you might ask yourself, Brother Ray, how can I replicate the death, the very resurrection of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Let me help you with that today. Romans 6, verse 3 and 4, there's no you not. There's so many of us baptized to Jesus Christ. We're baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Like Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we shall fall in the newness of life. If it you can become a member of the body. And once you become a member of the body, you've already been a member. You say, well, Brother Greg, I've been a member. I've been trying to do my best. Well, you may be a big prayer. Just ask God to help you to get to where you're trying to go. You might not be where you want to be right now, but that's okay. You're still here. So it's mean, you still got another chance. So God is giving you another chance, another opportunity to take advantage of it. But again, if you are not a member of the body, you can't have this relationship with God. The only way to get that is to be very with Him. In that we're going to give you a chance to do that right now as we sing the same invitation.